Recording one. <laughs> Recording one. What are you doing on your phone? Don't worry about what I'm doing. Okay. This is our first quarantine recording. Morning recording one. <laughs> here to talk about stuff from your breakfast you have that oatmeal mouth again mm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like that no, no. Listen to sound we did a we did a we did a mic test and he said something i don't know what it was like like oatmeal all in it and he, i was like ew and he said, does that sound sexy i'm like no, and he just did it again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, why we are here today is because we always have such great conversations when we see something and we unpack it together, we talk about it, we talk around it, we talk inside of it. It's like we dissect and and reflect and contemplate. Investigate. And investigate. Um, so we're going to start doing that um, and sharing that process with you all. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a regular process in, in conversation. Um, and every time something cool comes up and we wish it, it was shareable instead of just happening between us. So here we are. Regular morning. So, what were we talking about this morning? Classes. Dance classes. In heels. Mm. Which I've never actually taken one myself to date. Maybe, maybe I got a pair of heels one day. <laughs> Size 22. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll be a belated birthday present. I don't know. <laughs> Just not, not really hoping for that. <laughs> I think I've seeded an idea, though, that look. No, I wanted to see the impact of my look on you. What would happen? And I deceived you like, I was like ah. oh, 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 no, she's going to do it. <laughs> yeah. I just saw you like backing up and like, Eyes getting bigger, like shoulders getting tense, holding on your arms. I was like, oh, this is the impact of, of my look on you. <sighs> so going back to our conversation and why we're, what we were kind of talking about was heels classes. This is a... What's the word? There's so many layers to this topic for me because I have danced in heels. <laughs> I have moved in heels. I've taught in heels. I've worn heels. I've not worn heels. I've circled heels. I've fell in heels. I've flown in heels. <laughs> I've ran in heels. I've toured in heels. And I put my heels away recently. And twirled in heels. Twirled, I mean, of course. <laughs> and I put them away recently because <laughs> I'm like, oh, why, why am I wearing these heels was the question that really started to come up for me lately. Is why do I need them? Why do I think I need them? Mm -hmm. And can I do without them? And how does my body feel when I'm not wearing them? And the answer was better. So I was like, okay, I'm going to put these heels away for now. And when I feel like bringing them up again, I will. So we were watching a heels class and Michael had, some really wonderful feedback. I love hearing his feedback because he's coming from a place of he hasn't done all of those things in heels. He hasn't been around heels or the community for all of these years. He's just seeing them with mm -hmm. fresh eyes, no judgment, um, just like plainly speaking about what he's seeing. So what you had said about this particular combo was. Mm, yeah. Watching a, watching a dance combo or. I don't think I'm talking to the frog. Dance uh, routine. 
I mean, the moves and the routine was, I wasn't, I wouldn't say exactly cookie cutter, but, you know, I'm recognizing a lot of the moves from, I I guess, classes I've seen or dance videos or music videos, like, whatever. I see these moves around. Um, There are some slight variations, things I hadn't, like, seen it exactly done like that before, or, yeah. But essentially, it's it's pretty close to what is usually out there. And then some different hand flourish, and I was like, oh, okay, that's the new part. And that, but that part's nice. The other parts, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, it's just another, just another. I don't know what I would even call it. Just another sexy heels dance. Mm. Yeah, in quotes. <laughs> That's like the title of what we're doing or what she's doing here. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering what what drew people to doing classes where they are doing the quote unquote sexy heels dance, which is essentially the familiar string of moves put together in different order to different music but it's going to be like the same motions, the same movements. At first I thought, well, um, dancing in heels is probably difficult. Like wearing heels is difficult. I've seen people fall on them. So dancing them is gonna be hard. And so doing the same familiar moves is going to feel familiar. And maybe you're just getting better at them. You're getting used to it and eventually you know you see you get to see the improvements in the same moves because you're doing them in different routines different classes so a different environment but same moves so you can see the improvement you get start to feel better about how you're performing you look better you like the way you look better um it's easier it becomes easier especially as you get better it becomes easier to perform it easier to make it look good and that can like, I imagine like that results in this feeling of like, oh, I'm good. I'm a good dancer in heels. I'm a good heels dancer. I know when I'm not good at stuff, like stuff starts to come up. Like I'm not feeling good about myself because I don't think I'm like achieving it or I'm performing well. I'm not doing it awesome on the first time. So I'm starting to feel stuff about that, like judgments of myself, feeling down on myself, frustrated. So are you saying in classes where the same catalog of movements aren't used, those feelings of I'm not good enough start to come up when there's more of a challenge, stepping outside of that? Yeah, I can imagine that for sure. So like, say I went to my first heels class, none of my moves would, look like the teacher and you know i might be like that has the potential of me feeling you know self-judgmental on that or frustrated with my inability to perform it like that make it look like that Mm. so new moves or other yeah other ways of dancing in them that could it could result in that experience also for other people and that's uncomfortable. Brings up a lot here. I think you're touching on a common theme that I see a lot in the dance world and, and in every world. We are in the same world, really. I think everyone has, or most people have a version of this where we want, or we're striving for some form of perfection. And if it doesn't look the way we think it should look, it's wrong. If we're not already at the space we think we need to be in, we're not good enough. So we tend to stay in familiar spaces to feel that sense of worthiness, that validation. Because when we step into places that bring about a challenge or ask you to step outside of 
the catalog that you're used to, the experiences that you're used to, the moves that you're used to, you're going to feel uncomfortable. And I think we've grown into a society where we think uncomfortability means bad, wrong, don't go there, step back. When what I've been discovering, we've been discovering is that those moments of uncomfortability are actually a yes, you're going somewhere new. This is opp opportunity to grow. This is an opportunity to learn more moves, to learn more, to expand more, to be more of yourself, um, to learn how to use more of yourself. And I think there's been a confusion, I think, like um, <laughs> backwards is the word that's coming to mind, but just we, we've, we've, I think, confused the two. Like comfortability means yes, keep doing that. Uncomfortability means don't go there when really it's like comfortability means you're good there. Nothing new there. Nothing new there. You've got it. And uncomfortability means yes, go there. That's a place where you can grow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> As you were speaking, what came up for me is that that aversion to the discomfort of being in new places that you know applies to you know someone maybe taking their first dance class like I have, an, I have an aversion to going to my very first dance class because i don't know what it's going to be like it's going to be uncomfortable or or maybe even like changing styles of dance like i normally do this style and i'm going to do this new class that i don't know much about it looks different has a different feel a different vibe I don't know if I can do it. It'll be uncomfortable. Mm. Any new thing in general. I think that would be one of the blocks of aversion to engaging with a new practice. I mean, even look at how it ties into where we are right now, right? It's something new. What we're dealing with now, this pandemic, it's something new. We don't know what it is. We have it's to uncomfortable. Live in, a, live in a new way. We have to live in a new way. But we're in, we don't have a choice. We we are we are here. And I think that's one of the greatest gifts in all of this is that like there's no escaping stepping into the uncomfortable. We are in it. Like there's no choice but to be present with all that is here now. Like everything that's uncomfortable. We are being like fully immersed in that. And I think that is why, at least for me, why I feel it's the perfect time to immerse ourselves in uncomfortable areas and in, in, in all parts of our lives, whether it's a new dance class, you know, whether it's a new relationship, whether it's a new practices that you're trying to cultivate in your daily living, like this is the time. The discomfort is just happening anyway. <laughs> whether you choose it or not. Yeah, I think what gets you into trouble or others into trouble, people into trouble in relationship to discomfort and doing things where you're uncomfortable is that feeling that discomfort is, is bad. Feeling like it, it needs to change. It needs to be something more comfortable. <laughs> Let's make it more comfortable. Um, yeah, and it's that resistance to like being in discomfort. I experienced this for sure. Like in not being able to do something. Like I don't want that feeling. It's frustrating. Um, when we have the opportunity to look at it and experience it in a different way, where, where discomfort actually means where we're growing, where what discomfort is an opportunity. It's, it's something, it's bringing up something, some self-judgment perhaps, some experience that's uncomfortable. And that coming up is allowing us to burn through it or process it or be in it and release it so that we are we can heal it it's a healing process being in an experience is the opportunity to heal that experience and if we can heal it if we can process it then it doesn't have to come up every time 
it's it's like doing the investment doing the work now so that that same thing doesn't hold us back later it doesn't come up later so we, we're going to be comfortable in this situation the next time maybe or the time after that and in that way we're pushing pushing our growth edge and also increasing our capacity of what we're comfortable doing and able to do mm. and able to feel I'm really appreciating the progression of this conversation, how it started with, you know, a dance class and how it tied into a universal experience that I imagine most of us have in terms of our relationship with uncomfortability. And um, it's one of those things where why I believe so deeply in the power of movement and and what it's here mm. to show us, and also the power of investigation and, and reflection and inquiry, self-inquiry of, of, of staying with your process, staying with your emotions and, and, and not escaping, not putting it on the back burner, but really choosing to show up and be in it and to heal through it, as Michael was saying. And um, one of the practices that I found to be really um, beneficial beneficial in doing that is circling um, which is something that Michael does and it's a process of unpacking and, and really um, looking at something not only for the experience of it but like what's contributing to this experience like what's underneath mm -hmm. you know it's not just I don't like this thing it's like well what's that like you know and, and maybe why even why don't I like this thing what's the emotion behind that is there, you know, fear? Is there, you know, just really getting to like the tender spots of like why we do what we do instead of just not wanting to do it, but just really looking at what's our motivation here? What are we trying to avoid? And um, yeah, I've received a lot from our practices together. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's something that now we naturally do is we circle everything, you know, like, here's an event or just like we did today. Here's this dance class. Let's circle it. Let's get inside of it. Let's like really bring our curiosity to the experience. Yeah. Yeah. I think the body is such an avenue of allowing us to ident like identify, find and identify and, and then look at the experiences we're having. Yeah. And that's where I bring my, my experience when I'm circling and maybe not everyone does this, but I, you know, I like to encourage people to find their experiences in their body. And circling is kind of like, I found this experience, which could be an emotion or a sensation, or you know, whatever's happening for me. And I bring it out and I show it. And then everyone can look at it like, oh, we're all, we all see what, what you're experiencing now. And then other people maybe are like, oh, well, oh, that invokes this feeling. And we put that beside it and we can see how they're interacting and that turns into a progression and that turns into the investigation like the truths the individual truths of all involved are like bringing more into awareness and bringing more into understanding and i think healing it definitely at least having our truths experiences put side by side like we can see how we're connected like how my experience has impacted someone else's experience and it's become so clear how connected we are so more than just like think about think about it and see that there's a connection oh and all of a sudden i feel the connection too like oh wow this is like this is real it's right in front of me it's just been shown to me mm. I like that feeling mm. I have this like desire of like I don't even know where this video is going to end up or audio <laughs> or if I don't know we have no intention for this we're just doing it but I have this like feeling of like, did you guys get that? Like this curiosity of like wondering mm. if, if, 
if they got what you meant. Because I want you guys to. Because I think mm -hmm. what you're describing is something that's complex and very experiential. I know what it is because I've been there. But I wonder how that's translating for people, people hearing it. Yeah, me too. Because there, I guess there's 101 ways to describe this this process, and now I'm thinking how it relates to dance as well. Because in your dance class, what you're facilitating or what you're asking of people is to bring what's inside and show it. It's the same thing, except you're asking them to show it with their body instead of speaking it. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking for is how that, how that showing of someone's experience with their body, how that impacts you and how you feel when you perceive it. Do you feel that it's there or is there like something hidden? Mm. So I think that's, it's a similar experience. Yeah. Because I, I always do say that, like, I or we or anyone can't feel you unless you feel you. That's, like, the most important step of relating in general. Relating, mm -hmm. you know, expressing, dancing, sharing art, whatever it is you're sharing with another is, like, it's important to connect to that source, to that feeling for yourself first. And that's what is translated. That's what is shared. Mm -hmm. So if you're not connected to that, you're sharing. Isn't that, <laughs> you're not sharing that. You're not sharing that, but like in your sharing is like, it's not, um, I lost the word there. It's not, uh, I'm just going to let it go. I'll just go with what the words that you put in there. Authentic. <laughs> No, it's Powerful. fine. It's okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm going to look for the word now. <sighs> no, you won't find it because it was mine to share. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sure you guys can fill in the blanks there. But um, yeah, so the key really is to connect to that place for yourself first. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Once you've connected to that place, it's easier for us to connect to that to connect to you. So what, I th what I'm hearing you're saying is that like, and what I'm saying even, is that for anyone in your life, anyone you're having a relationship with, it's easier for them to connect to you, to understand you, to feel you, to get you, to be with you, to love you, when you love and connect and feel yourself. And share yourself too. I don't agree with that part. It's you don't not, think it's easier when someone shares it? Yeah, but like I think that I think I wanted to really leave it at that point that I had there. <laughs> <laughs> because I think that's like the foundational thing. Because I think when yes. it goes to sharing yourself, it's like I think that that goes into another realm now. It's like, okay, what's the space I'm in? you know, discernment comes in, like, okay, is this a, a space that I, that I'm choosing to share my energy, myself with, you know, is it safe? There like, are many choices, yeah, yeah, many options once you feel yourself, yeah, you're right, that is the foundational space, is to, you must first be able to feel yourself before you can even make a choice of what to do with that yes. awareness, so awareness is definitely the key to all of our options, and make a conscious decision or action of where we're going to go from there. Mm. <laughs> you guys are getting a really um, intimate peek into our like process here. <laughs> and I'm going to name one of the things that always comes up. <laughs> is I'll say something then Michael will put other words in it and I'm like no but I meant what I said like <laughs> what I said is is what I meant those are the words that I wanted 
no other words fit. <laughs> this is a square hole. Do not put a circular peg in it. <laughs> and when, I think what I'm, no, if, if I investigate that further is I think what's there is like, I'm wanting you to hear what I'm saying. Like I'm wanting you to take in what I'm sharing from, from the source. And when I hear new words on it, it feels like you're trying to change it. It's being changed instead of being taken in for like what's coming inside and, and being shared. And I know on the outside, if I were to step back and like knowing you and your intention, I know that's not your intention. Like I, I know because you've shared that like you want to put it in new words to show that you understand. But for me, it doesn't feel that way. I think I'm just wanting my words to be received and like, like even if there's a period between like the reception, the reception channel, and then like taking it in and then being like suggesting other words to speak to what I'm saying. I think is something that I would want. So you would prefer actually no acknowledgement. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> What's a period then? <laughs> like, taking the words in for what they are before trying to change them. Like, like for example, I'm trying to take something you just said. Like, what's a period then? I'd be like, I don't, I don't even have this like tool instead of like answering you I would try to like rephrase your no that's a question though I'm trying to give an example you know it's like someone's sharing with you like you're sharing to me how you feel about something and I'm just putting it in different words I think even hearing saying what I'm hearing you say or like what I get from that is like this rather than like just switching the words because like, like I'm not hearing that there's like a reception um, there's just a switch like it needs to change you want me to circle it I don't know what that means for you <laughs> that's what that means to me <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. it's like this like you want me to lay it all out my whole process which would be including the line what I'm hearing you say yeah, or maybe maybe something like this, like, I don't really understand, because I think that's sometimes what it is. Like, I don't really understand the concept you're saying, like, what, what I think you mean, instead of just, like, switching it, because I know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sharing that with you. <laughs> and it doesn't need switching or fixing. <laughs> to me, it's just, it's true. To you. It's true. Mm -hmm. I think we unpack something here. Do you feel like it's, it's, what it sounds like to me is that the way you share it connects to the way you understand it? And that in the process of reception, if that's changed to fit the way of understanding that I have or that someone else might have. Mm. Do you think, or you, it, it's uncomfortable for you, <laughs> firstly. And I think that you're, you're saying you think that, I, that that process is changing the thing itself. Because mm. you're bringing a new understanding to it. Mm. Which doesn't look like the way. That I understand it. I guess I'm wanting you to understand it the way I understand it, which is pretty impossible, but we're different. So that actually makes sense. It's something for me to look at. Can I let go of attachment to this experience and allow, your, allow you to experience it the way that you will experience it and the way that you will understand it and it not be lost? It didn't lose its potency. 
because you're understanding it differently. Right. I just like what I have to say so much sometimes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I want Attached you to switch to it. it. <laughs> Don't switch it. It's gold. I'm not changing your tagline. It's gold. <laughs> yeah, he likes to change my taglines all the time. I'm like, no, that's not the feel. That is not the feel. I want to back up a second because rather than that process, like degrading the potency of the thing that you're understanding, I actually see it as exemplifying how potent it really is because it's inspiring mm. something new in someone else. That's good. I definitely was not seeing that. Wow, I think that might actually change a lot for me if I can know that when I'm sharing something for you and you're adding onto it, it's because you're inspired by it. Not because you're trying to change it or that it's not good or... Okay. Taking that in. There it is. I was going to make a joke about that, but I'm like, no, I won't take away from this moment. <laughs> I was really wanting a bell to ring. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get those bells for our next our next session because I think we're at a close at this point um, yeah. for moments when things are like illuminated and brought to the light we should be like have like a ding sound because oh I know what he's gonna get because that really is what it is right we're bringing things to the light <laughs> and um I guess we're gonna we're gonna close our our session um, today. I think I want to post this. I feel like this is really good. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is fun. This is really good. What I want to ask you guys: What do you think we should call this? What should we call these sessions if we're gonna make them more regular? And and would you want to hear more of these raw unpacking sessions between us? Yeah, that'd be great to know. We had fun. Yeah, it was really fun. All right, guys. Well, if you're looking for a space to try on some of this new movement and get into your body, I'm going to be teaching a class actually today ah, oh, yeah. at 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's pay your own price. So money is not a factor here. Come as you are. And also, Michael is also hosting a session on Saturday. Saturday at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, we're doing a, a authenticity and relationship meditation. Um, it's going to be something like this, I guess. We're sharing ourselves and being with each other and, and using that awareness to connect. And that one also is pay your own price as well. Yes, it is. Doing it on Zoom. Yeah, everything's on Zoom. Y'all know. <laughs> Social distancing. We're actually quarantined for Physical 14 days. Physical distancing. Physical distancing, because we just came back from the States. But uh, anyway, looking forward to connecting with you all in the future and um, sending you all so much love. Take care. <laughs>